welcome to the course on introduction to electrical engineering we will have a lecture 39 synchronous machine part 2 so starting for the outline of today presentation we will talk about param determination of parameters of equivalent circuit then voltage regulation active and reactive power angle characteristic then we will talk about shell and pole synchronous generator pangel characteristic of shell and pole machine then method of starting of synchronous motor then cylindrical rotor equivalent circuit phase diagram and shell and pole motor equivalent circuit phase diagram and exercise numerical problem. So, starting with the determination of parameters of equivalent circuit from the test data. So, well the equivalent circuit of a synchronous generator that has been derived contains three quantities that must be determined in order to completely describe the behavior of the real synchronous generator the open circuit situation characteristic that is relationship between I f and E f that is therefore, I f and E f and synchronous reactance and armature resistance. The all three quantity could be determined by performing the following three tests open circuit test, short circuit test and DC test and armature resistance is often neglected as in large machine it is small compared to synchronous reactance it is needed armature resistance can be obtained by a DC resistance test. So, this is typically we can call it the generator is turned on at the rated speed for open circuit test and terminals are disconnected from all loads and the field current is set to 0 then the field current is gradually increased in steps and the terminal voltage is measured at each step along with the way and it is thus possible to obtain open circuit characteristic of the generator that E f or V t versus I f from the this information as shown from the diagram and this is the if you plot it it is open circuit voltage versus field current you can see the red line. So, it is initially it is linear then and that we call it the air gap line up to 70 percent of your rated voltage is your straight line. So, we can have even 2 point from base and 70 percent 1 point so you can have a straight line after that it goes into saturation I mean typically above 70 percent of rated voltage and that goes even we have to get the characteristic at least about 20 to 30 around 30 percent higher than the rated terminal voltage. Now, coming to short circuit test adjust the field current to 0 and short circuit the terminals of the generator through set of armature and record the armature current ISC as the field current is increased and such plots are called short circuit test. So, you have field current which you can adjust it and this is the short circuit current here and in this equivalent circuit you can say E here short circuit to excess I A this is dominating the reactance. So, virtually it goes directly opposing to this and that is the reason it is just a linear characteristic. So, you can if you plot it short circuit current with the field current short circuit current armature current then it comes as a straight line. So, you can say when short circuited armature is short circuited armature action prevent the machine from saturating and the short circuit per phase equivalent circuit and the phase diagrams are shown and the synchronous reactance is usually significant larger than the armature resistance. So, as a result the armature current significantly lacks the induced voltage. So, state of flux uh, density phase produced by the armature current lacks the armature current by 90 and consequently will lack the rotor flux density by around almost 180 to so net magnetic field 180 degree. So, net magnetic field is the too low to cause the saturation and hence the armature current increases linearly with the field current. So, it produces I mean virtually the armature reaction produces direct demagnetizing effect of armature reaction which has over the main field. So, net field in the typically you can call it for the machine is quite low to so machine is not situated that is why this characteristic is linear characteristic. Now, coming to DC test the purpose of DC test is to determine the R A and a variable DC voltage source is connected between the two stator terminal and DC source is adjusted to provide the approximately rated stator current and the resistance between the two stator leads is determined from the voltmeter ammeter reading and then R D C equal to V D C upon R D C and the if the stator is star connected the per phase stator resistance is R equal to R D C by 2 and if the stator is delta connected the per phase resistance R A will be 3 by 2 R D C and typically determining the synchronous reactance for a particular field current the internal voltage E f equal to V a could be found from open circuit characteristic O c c and short circuit characteristic flows I s c could be find out from short circuit test then the situation synchronous reactance can be obtained equal to here there that is unsuited under to R a square plus x saturated square that is V a equal to x divided by I s c. So, x unsuited will be under z s c square unsuited minus R a square and R a is known from DC resistance. So, if x is very high compared to R a to x unsaturated can be f upon I saturated that is V t upon open circuit divided by I c s c from this character. And you can say at V equal to V rated 
you can call it as z saturated under root r a square plus x a square that is b t equal to f upon i b and x saturated will be z s saturated square minus r a square where r is known from the DC test. The equivalent circuit and phasor diagram you can see here you have a e f j x s and r a and that is the terminal voltage and you are connecting the generator to the and this is typically for the when you have a b t equal to 0 to total industrial m f is only for resistance drop and the synchronous reactance drop like. So, now coming to a terminology called short circuit ratio. So, armature parameters used to describe the synchronous generator in the short circuit ratio and the short circuit ratio of the generator defined as the ratio of field current required for the rated voltage to open circuit. At open circuit the field current required for rated armature current at short circuit. The SCR is just the reciprocal of per unit value of the situated synchronous reactance calculated by typically here SCR equal to IF V rated divided by IF so that becomes 1 upon X excess unsuited in per unit like as you can see from the graph. Now, defining now voltage regulation in case of synchronous generator, a convenient way to compare the voltage behavior of the two generator in by their voltage regulation. The voltage regulation of synchronous generator given at uh, load power factor and rated speed is defined as V r equal to E f minus V t upon V t into 100, where V t is the full load terminal voltage, E f is the no load terminal voltage internal voltage at rated speed when the load is removed without changing the field current. For lagging power factor, V r is fairly positive, for unity power factor, V r is small positive, and for leading power factor, V r is negative. And you can get even the zero voltage regulation also, but that will be always slightly leading at slightly at leading power factor. The factor affecting the voltage regulation of alternator are armature reactions, armature reactance, and effect of armature reaction. So, we have a many methods of voltage regulation here, we are just showing three methods EMF or synchronous impedance method, EMF or ampere turn method and zero power factor portier triangle method. So, EMF or synchronous reactance method effect of winding impedance and armature reaction are represented by the equivalent circuit impedance drop of this method. Therefore, this method is known as EMF method. As you can see the phase diagram, we have a uh, terminal voltage lagging power factor load that is theta with the armature current and I R A drop, I X drop and that give you over E A and from this you can estimate the E A and then the voltage regulation. So, you can call it from phasor diagram that is E F e square equal to V T cos pi taking the component virtually in the two axis. So, plus I A R A square plus V T sin phi plus I A X e square and then finally, I mean coming to F equal to V T after solving it becomes plus I A R A cos phi plus X S sin phi and percentage of regulation will be your E F minus V T upon E F into 100 that is I A r a cos phi plus minus x s sin phi upon v t into 100. So, here plus sign is for lagging power factor load and minus sign is for leading power factor load. So, now the second method m f or ampere turn method, this method is a converse of e m f method. So, in this method the effect of winding impedance armature reaction are equivalent to ampere turn and this method is called m f method and the required data for calculation of regulation is obtained from the open circuit and short circuit test of alternator. And here we plot typically of course, same way as your typically V t I e R A and that V 1 dash I e and we plot the M f method virtually a field current. You can call it the full load current and then in current addition of both and this is the E f. So, we can say V t is the terminal voltage, I e is the full load current, V 1 is the sum of V t of I e R A and I f 1 is the field current required to generate V 1 and I f 2 field current required to calculate the rated current in the armature winding of short circuit and E f is the induced voltage for field current. So, now from this the regulation of percentage your E t minus V a. So, we go from M f from the for the given field current. So, we can find out the E f and from I f 2 from the rated thermal voltage. So, from which we can get if e, e f minus V t upon V t as a voltage regulation. And this is the Portier triangle method. I mean here in phase diagram we have the your O c c test and this is the uh, typically lagging power factor or pure inductive load we connect it and correspond to 100 percent volt load we identify this point put the perpendicular to this and then we on this success I mean we make this on the 100 percent and parallel to this line we make a plot and this from portier triangle we can get the drop of typically of this drop here as you can see the from the IMF like. So, here step for portier we V t is the per phase provided calculate I x L add I x L with the V t and from O c c it is find I f 1 corresponding to E as in M f method from portier triangle find I f 2 to balance the armature reaction add I f 1 and I f 2 vector to get I f and from O c c get E f corresponding to I f and find the voltage regulation. 
So, this little modification you can call for getting leakage reactance. So, now coming to active and reactive power angle characteristic, I mean here we are having considering that the more this machine I mean synchronous generator connected to infinite grid, I mean so we say P equal to greater than 0, it is a generator operation, P is less than 0 that is motor operation and positive P delivering the inductive VR to for a generator action, uh, VR for motoring X and induct or receiving and negative Q is the delivering capacity we are for generator action and receiving capacity we are for motor action. So, now typically real and reactive powers delivered by a synchronous generator or consumed by a synchronous motor can be expressed in terms of terminal voltage, generator induced you know, synchronous impedance and the power, ang power angle or torque angle. So, re referring to the figure, it is convenient to adopt the conversion that makes positive or real power and positive reactive power reactive power Q delivered by over excited generator, the generator action corresponds to the positive value of delta while the motor action is corresponding to negative value of delta. So, you can say the complex output power of generator in volt ampere, we can be written as is equal to P plus J, J Q and in terms of V T it can write V T into I A conjugate where V T is the terminal voltage per phase and I A com Z is the complex conjugate of the armature current per phase. So, taking into the term voltage I reference, so we can say V T at the angle of Vt plus J0, the excitation of the generator voltage Ef will be cos phi plus J sin sorry Ef cos in bracket cos delta plus J sin delta and the armature current will be Ia equal to will be Ef minus Vt upon J axis that will be Ef cos delta minus Vt plus J Ef sin delta divided by J axis where x is the synchronous reactance per phase and we are neglecting the resistance of course in this case. So, S will be equal to P plus JQ that is V t into I a conjugate and that will be V t in bracket E f cos delta minus V t minus J e f sin delta divided by minus J x and after solving it becomes V t e f cos sin delta divided by x s plus J e f V t e f cos delta minus V t square upon x s. We can say P is your V t e f sin delta x s and Q is because of J V t e f cos delta minus V t square divided by x s like. So, now we can say P equal to Vt in Af sin delta upon x and Q equal to Vt Af cos delta minus Vt square upon x s. So, above two equations of active and reactive powers hold good for cylindrical rotor machine for negligible resistance to obtain the total power for a three phase generator the above equations will be multiplied by 3 when the voltage are line to neutral. If the line to line magnitudes are used then the voltage and how these equations give the three phase power. So, here the P equal to again Vt Af sin delta upon x and Q equal to Vt E f cos delta minus V t square upon x s. So, this equation is very important equation in study of synchronous machine and induced in instead of studying of AC power system in general. So, when applied to the situation of synchronous machine connected to AC system, this equation is commonly referred as a power angle characteristic for synchronous machine and the angle delta is known power angle. And this is the characteristic how you can just see here we keep it a power angle characteristic. I mean. Uh, typically as far as uh, torque or power because speed is constant. So, we can say this is pull out power or torque and here pull out torque as a motor and this is the power uh, torque versus delta angle. I mean, so you can just see normally operating condition is generator here as you can see here it is much lesser than peak and for motoring also it is much lesser than the maximum torque or stability limit we call it. So, total three, total three phase power is with P equal to 3 Vt F into excess sin delta and the above equation shows that the power produced by a synchronous generator depends on the angle delta between V t and E f and the maximum power that can be generator can supply occur when delta equal to 90 degree or P equal to P max equal to 3 V t e f upon x s. So, maximum power indicate indicated by this equation is called steady state stability limit of the generator. If we try to exceed this limit, the rotor will accelerate and the lose synchronous with the infinite bus. So, we have to recognize the generator before we can pick up the load. Normally, real generators never even come close to this limit. The full load torque angle is normally 15 to 20 degree are more typical than of real machine. And the maximum torque of pull out torque per phase of two pole motor can be have T max equal to P max upon omega that is P max upon 2 pi ns upon 60 where ns is the synchronous speed of the motor. And you can just have a plot with delta Q and P here the active and reactive power is a function of internal angle delta. Now, coming to talk about little bit about cell and pole synchronous generator. 
So, saline pole in corner generator you can see the rotor pole or saline pole and with the field excitation and armature is similar to typically of your cylindrical machine and how the rotor pole projecting poles are used. So, more hydraulic turbine have to turn at low speed between 50 to 300 rpm and large number of poles are required on the rotor and this is how you have a typically the field excitation I mean here and how the armature and with the field flux are there. And typical quadrature axis of reactants because here reactants are different in cylinder pole machine. So, here you can have a like a direct axis we call it a field axis as a direct axis and it is TMF which is 90 degree apart from field axis is a excitation voltage voltage induced to so that we call it quadrature axis and the uh, phasor sum of I d and I q is the armature current like and similar expression comes basically for the flux also here. And the phasor diagrams here comes with the you have a even for typically you will have a this phasor diagram for the uh, generator. So, we have typically here uh, starting with the v, v a terminal voltage then I r a drop like for lagging power factor then I j I d x d j i s q s q and that is become the E f and this we call it the phasor diagram where the current is divided into two part I a I d and I q direct access quadrature access component. So, this is typically I mean the the phasor, same phase diagram where all the quantity are defined here and typically what is the relation between x q is lower than the x t 0.6 or so and the industrial map equation comes from the phase diagram V a plus I r a plus j x d i d plus j x q i q. Now, coming to power angle characteristic of saline pole synchronous machine I mean here that as we have seen the synchronous connect to infinite bus so the this reactance so where we have typically again V and then if resistance we neglect it is I d uh, x d followed plus your j i q s q that becomes E f like. So, we can here where of course, we have a constant reactance connected to the grid of that we call it line reactance to x total x d t will be x d plus x q and x q t will be x q plus x q. So, bus voltage x q is rolled into two component that is V d equal to V q into sin delta and quadrature will become V q into E q into cos delta with the phase I d I q respectively the power delivered to the bus will be P equal to I d V d plus J I q S q that is I d E q sin delta plus J I q V E q cos delta and from here we can get I d value E f minus V e q cos delta upon X a r and I q will be V e q sin delta upon X q t and putting the value here P will be E q E f e V e q upon X t t sin delta plus v, v, v q square minus x d t minus x q t divided by 2 x d t x q t sin 2 delta. So, here you have a two term one the excitation power another is your saliency power. So, first term is same as the expression of 10 in cylindrical machine and second term include the effect of saline pole. It represents fact that the air gap wave create the torque will tending to align the field poles in the position of minimum direction. And this power same v here P equal to per phase power E f V e q divided by x d t sin delta plus V e q square x d minus x q divided by 2 x d t x q t into sin 2 delta. The term powering to the term in the power corresponding to reluctance torque and reluctance torque is independent of field excitation second term and if x e t equal to x, x d t equal to x q is the uniform air gap machine there is no principal direction of magnet so reluctance torque is 0 and in this equation the second characteristic second term is 0 and that becomes the similar to like a cylindrical characteristic. So, this characteristic negative value of delta is the same except the reversal of P and that is the reason generator and motor region are the like and resistance negligible for generator action E f leads the E f for motor action lacks the steady state operation is stable in the range where the slope of the power angle characteristic is positive. And this how we can find out the value of x d x q. So, for using the slip test we can find out x d x q. So, here we are exciting this stator by the three phase voltage and we are seeing the voltage and current and we are exciting the field and typically so about 25 percent of rate will apply to stator winding following in cap open and the alternate is driven by a speed slightly more than the or less than the synchronous speed in the same direction of rotating magnetic field and figure so the instant of peak of armature MFA in the line. So, field you can say stator field passes through the q axis and d axis that passes the minimum and maximum current flowing into the armature winding at the very low frequency or at which the slip is there in that case. So, under this condition the air gap is minimum hence the reluctance is also minimum 
thus the armature flux or flux mf reluctance is maximum in this case so under this condition flux linkage per ampere or armature winding is called direct excess reluctance and ld is a flux linkage upon current so that is actually equal to omega d that is phi f l ld and at quadrate axis 1 uh, magnetic effect is along the particular to the field axis when the peak of armature current have coincide with the quadrature axis the reactance offered machine is called quadrature axis reactance peak armature mf is along with the perpendicular to this the position of armature mf one quadrature one quarter of a slip angle along with the typically q axis and under this condition reactance reactance offered by the two large air gap is maximum for a given armature current the armature mf is constant and hence the under this condition armature flux flux mf is minimum thus the flux linkage per armature current is also called quadrature axis synchronous reactance to lq equal to flux linkage and xq equal to omega lq that is pi l sorry so in case of sudden pole synchronous machine the air gap is non firm therefore xd is much greater than xq so but due to the uniform air gap in cylindrical pole machine both direct and quadrature axis are equal that is xd equal to xq in fact, due to presence of rotor slots along with the Q axis, the XQ is slightly less than the XD for cylindrical pole machine. Now, coming to method of starting of synchronous motor. So, method of starting of synchronous, there are two, met three methods that are used to start of synchronous motor because synchronous motor is not self starting as the risk well cage induction motor or induction motor, but here what we have to do to reduce the speed of rotating field of the stator to low so that the rotor can easily accelerate to lock in with the during one half cycle of the rotating field and to use the external pry mover to accelerate the rotor of synchronous motor to near the synchronous speed and then supply the rotor as well and to use the damper winding or a master winding if there are provided in the machine. So, the first is the starting by reducing the electrical frequency. So, if stator flux rotates at low enough speed this will be a there will be no problem by rotating accelerate and will work lock with the stator. This method we use of course for variable frequency drive. The speed of BS then can be increased gradually to 50 years or 60 years. And shortcoming how to provide the variable electrical frequency so that need to be dedicated generator or maybe a kind of inverter. This require an obviously impact many features. So today typically two day rectifier inverter and cycle conductor can be used to convert constant frequency to desired output frequency with the modern solid state variable frequency drive package. It is perfectly possible to continuously control the electrical frequency applied to the motor from fractional of hot up to the above rated frequency. In such variable frequency drive unit including motor control circuit achieve the speed control thus a starting of synchronous motor is very easy. When synchronous motor operated at a speed lower than the rated speed its internal voltage E A equal to K phi omega will be smaller than the normal voltage. So, if A is reduced the voltage applied to the motor must be reduced to keep the external current to safe level and the voltage at any variable frequency drive or variable frequency must be roughly linearly with the applied frequency as we discuss in case of index motor. So, the second method for starting with the external driver to so attaching external motor to it to bring a synchronous machine, synchronous machine to a full speed and then synchronous machine parallel with the power system or generator. Now, starting the motor can be detached from the machine shaft and then slow down or be are following pin at behind and machine change its mode of to the motor once paralleling completed synchronous motor can be loaded down to ordinary fashion. Since the starting motor should be overcome inertia of the synchronous machine without a load and a starting motor can have much a smaller rating and since most synchronous motor have brushless excitation system mounted on their shaft often these excitors can be used to as a starting motor for many medium size to large synchronous motor actual starting motor or a starting of external motor may be only possible solution because the connected power system source may not be possible to able to feed the required starting current by a master winding. And this is the damper winding or a master we can call it starting by master. The most popular method is employing a master or damper winding. Master windings are special bars laid down in the notches carved in the face of the synchronous motor rotor poles and then sorted on the east end of the large sorting ring. Now, coming to typically cylindrical rotor motor equivalent circuit and phasor diagram and this is the cylindrical on the rotor you have field winding uh, sorry damper winding to so, per phase steady state equivalent circuit of non cylindrical pole machine you have VT you have excitation of the synchronous reactance and resistance. So, E f E a f equal to V t minus I a in bracket R a plus the axis where axis is omega L s and axis is x phi into x a. So, synchronous axis synchronous reactance is armature leakage reactance and x f is 
phi is the effective magnetizing direction and this is the steady state phasor diagram of land pole machine V t typically for the motor. So, you have I a I a R a minus I r a minus x z that is I a z that is E f this is for synchronous motor phasor diagram. So, here E f your excitation will always lag than the V d volt V t thermal voltage and this is the typically you can call it the phasor diagram corresponding to lead typically your your leading power factor or over excitation as you can see f is more than the v t and this is for case of your uh, case of your lagging power factor like. So, here from equivalent circuit you can say i a equal to v t minus e f upon z or v t minus e f upon r a plus the axis or equi or you neglect the resistance then you say v t minus e f upon the axis from phasor diagram you can see e f equal to e f cos delta minus j sin delta and i a j i a cos phi plus j sin phi. So, i a cos phi plus j sin phi will be v t minus e f cos delta minus j sin delta upon j x and it is spreading real and imaginary part. So, it become i a cos phi equal to e i x s into sin delta equal to i a sin phi equal to f cos delta minus v t upon x. And now from this you can say i a cos phi equal to v t upon x s into cos minus phi by 2 minus e f x s cos into minus delta minus phi by 2. So, that becomes equal to minus i a cos phi equal to minus e f excess cos delta plus pi by 2 equal to e f excess sin delta. The power input to the motor can be p d equal to 3 v t i a cos phi and this becomes 3 v t e f upon excess into sin delta and power output from the soft is p a equal to 2 by pole into 2 omega that is p i upon p of therefore, 2 by pole t omega equal to 3 v t e f into excess into sin delta or torque equal to 3 pole by 2 into V 2 E f upon E omega E into x s into sin delta and little d it can be also written T equal to P by 2 pole by 2 square v phi f into f f into sin delta r f where the little flux and f f is the DC excitation m f and delta f is the electrical phase angle between the your magnetic flux phi r and f f. Now, effect of increased load at normal excitation neglecting armature action assuming that the field excitation of synchronous motor is normal under and unchanged the speed of AC motor synchronous motor can not be changed as a result of increased load, but the torque angle can or does increase as you can see on the load the delta increases on increased load. The increase in load angle result in increase army second in and that cause increase in resultant what is the increase in power drawn from the supply and then develop torque by the synchronous motor increase army circle and E f and V t both are typically the constant. This is the typical effect of increase at normal excitation how it is changing the phasor diagram. So, now effect of increased load at normal excitation when machine is deliberately under excited E f is less than V t when a small load and torque angle the armature current I a almost lacks applied voltage by 90 degree a fairly substantial current must flow to develop the power of because of power power factor as the load is increased the power factor improve because of the increased resultant voltage more current flows and since the power factor is increased the total power generated by the armature also increased to meet the load. At very heavy load the effect of under excitation produces the poor power factor that is the normal excitation. And this is the phasor diagram corresponding to the V t and you have a typically if different armature current then you have a different excitation voltage also corresponding to different power angle. So, now coming to effect of increased load on over excitation when machine is deliberately under excited that is E f is greater than over excited typically E f is greater than V t under the typically unlike the DC motor it is possible to generate a voltage higher than the bus voltage and still draw the current from power from the bus. This occurs because of the generator voltage and bus voltage are 180 degree out and when load is small E f almost in phase with the E f because of later exceed the bus voltage. So, at the load is applied the power factor improve the power factor angle decreases and faster rate and then current uh, typically increases thus the producing a necessary increased power. So, now coming to effect of discussing effect of armature reaction the over excited synchronous motor will draw leading current from the bus producing a demagnetizing effect of armature reaction as a result of over excitation and under excited synchronous motor draws a lagging current magnetizing current from the bus. And typically you can say machine connected to infinite bus P equal to 3 V to I A cos phi and for constant power I A cos phi equal to constant. So, the reactive power can be controlled by field excitation that is J x equal to V t minus E f and also P equal to 3 V t into I f into x s into sin delta or E f sin delta equal to constant. So, you can see in this case 
I mean you have a here we have a characteristic between I f versus for a given power I f and power factor. So, this is the characteristic between we call it weaker characteristic between I a and typically I f and this is the power factor versus your field current. So, here it is lagging over excitation leading and here it is current at unity power factor is minimum and power factor is maximum that is unity, but current is minimum in the armature and that is how we explain here the V d is constant, but by changing the excitation you can have a over excitation towards the leading power factor and when you reduce the excitation you have a EF on norm other value and accordingly the power factor changes from your lagging to leading power factor on the typically armature current, the armature current is minimum at the corresponding to unity power factor and this is the case of three different you can call it two different cases I mean the your uh, phasor diagrams which explain about the your typically about the weaker operation and here it is you have a you different armage current corresponding to for uh, different armage current for leading and lagging over excitation of this with the field excitation and these are the virtually the weaker which present for different load light load no load then full, full load and your half load and the rated load this is the only leading power factor lagging power factor these we call it the V curve and how to get this circuit diagram for V curve you are connecting the machine with constant voltage you are measuring voltage and current and power by 2 watt meter method and you are changing the excitation rotor is running at the constant load and you make a plot of your at one particular load you vary the field current see the armature current and with the increase the load half the rated and full load and these are the characteristics and if you calculate the power factor versus field current these are the power factor and this is corresponding to the full load then because load is less the effect of armature reaction is less and then no load further less. So, this is the in you can call it we call it like a typically you are inverted V curve and that we call it the V curve. So, now coming to power flow in synchronous generator not all the electrical power going to synchronous generator becomes mechanical power out of machine the difference between the input power and output power represents the losses in the machine the output power is the soft power here if we talk about the motor we have the motor typically output power that is after the steel losses we have rotational losses we have a core losses we have a copper losses and that is the input power from the input power we have a copper losses then we have a core losses we have rotational losses steel losses and this is a mechanical output power so now coming to cell pole generator equivalent circuit and phasor diagram so that is typically the cell pole machine i mean the typically the rotor with cell and c and here we have a field MF and flux along the direct axis and steel current is phased with the excitation voltage armature MF is according to the quadrature axis as you can see here. So, here we can see steel current is lagging the excitation voltage by 90 degree and armature MF and field along with the D axis directly opposing the field and the same magnitude armature MF produce more flux in the direct axis than the quadrature axis and magnetizing reactance is not unique in a cell pole machine and you can see the armature quantity can be resolved to component one acting direct axis another is quadrature axis and these components produce the fluxes in F A D and F A Q where D is direct axis reactance X D and quadrature axis into X Q and leakage reactance X. So, synchronous reactance X D equal to X A D plus X L and X Q equal to X A Q upon X L or so and this is the typically the kind of phase diagram for the X L and this is the typical equivalent circuit we have V T we have X D plus X Q and resistance and then E F and the equation a volt ampere equation will be E F equal to V T plus I A R A plus I A D J X D plus I A Q J X Q and the corresponding phasor diagrams is typically here. So, we have a here starting with the you can call it the either we go with the excitation voltage followed by J X Q and then I J X Q X Q J I A D and then it is a typically the V T and V T component also you can put in I D I A component also in I A Q. So, from this we can say from phasor diagram I A cos phi equal to I A Q cos delta minus I A D sin delta and power input to the motor will be P T equal to 3 V T into I cos phi that is 3 V T I A cos delta minus I A sin delta again from phasor diagram we can write I A D equal to V T cos delta minus E F upon X D and I A Q V T sin delta upon F. So, P I equal to 3 V T V T sin delta upon X Q into cos delta minus V T cos delta minus E F upon X D into sin delta and then finally, we get the P T P i equal to 3 V T E F into X is sin delta plus 3 V T square X D minus X Q upon 2 X D X Q into sin delta and power from the soft will be P i equal to 2 bipole into 2 omega that is 
neglecting the losses, so it becomes p equal to 3 by p 1 upon omega equal to v 2 v t f upon x d into sin delta plus v t square x d minus x q upon 2 x d x q into sin 2 delta or t equal to 3 by pi 2 1 upon e phi s phi f into l d s sin delta and plus phi s square l d f minus l q upon 2 l d l q to sin 2 delta and this is the power angle characteristic for different excitation when your this is with 0 excitation only saliency torque then the excitation you increase half or 1 or 1.5 the effect of virtually the effect will go increasing of excitation, but the maximum for typically the I mean it goes between 0 to 90 degree virtually it never touch 90 is lower this is for generator this is for motor I mean power angle minus is always for motor like. So, coming to a typical revision of synchronous machine equivalent circuit concept synchronous speed is n s equal to 1 to 20 f by p and synchronous machine phasor is e equal to v i r a plus a i x and these are the phasor diagram for lagging power factor leading power factor leading power factor which require less excitation and this is the your open circuit characteristic which is linear up to 70 percent excitation current after that is saturated short circuit characteristic linear this is a phasor diagram from that and synchronous reactance we define it here x s equal to e upon i s c from this and typically power angle characteristic which we find it here correspond to x s i a. So, we say power p per phase power is your v i a cos theta or p out is 3 for 3 phase is 3 v i a cos theta and q equal to 3 v i a sin theta and p converted p out will plus 3 i a square and approximate if we neglect the resistance then we can say p equal to 3 v e into x s into sin delta and q equal to 3 v cos delta upon x s minus 3 v square upon x s. So, now coming to numerical problem a 480 volt 60 years 4 k v a 4 4 star connected synchronous generator operates at rated v a with power factor of 0.9 lagging rotational loss is 10. The armature resistance is r a equal to 0 0.02 ohm calculate the armature current generator efficiency and prime work torque. The armature current here is s equal to root 2 v l l i l the i l will be 400,000 divided by root 3 into 480 that comes i l equal to 481 and generator is star connected to i l equal to i a. So, i a is your 481 and the generator efficiency to find the efficiency it is first necessary to find the input power using simplified generator power flow p n equal to p out plus p rotational plus 3 i a square. So, p out equal to 400.9 and p out 360 kilowatt and p in 360 plus 10 kilowatt plus i square or 3 into 481 square point zero two the p in 380 point 3.9 kilowatt so efficiency p in upon p out so that is eta equal to 360 by 383.9 that is eta equal to 93.8 percent and the prime work torque the input power is mechanical p in equal to t omega s and omega s 4 pi upon p so omega s 60 pi radian per second so t equal to 20837 newton meter. Now coming to numerical example second a 600 volt star connected synchronous generator is tested under open and short circuit condition with the result table here we have a field current versus open circuit voltage and short circuit current under normal operation the situated synchronous sequence x s equal to 0 0.4 and equal to negligence calculate the unsituated synchronous sequence to so, generator is operating at 500 kV with power factor of 0.89 lagging and using x s equal to 0 0.4 calculate the field current required to sketch the phase diagram to so, calculate the unsituated reactance synchronous reactance, unsituated reactance is found from the initial table data when the open circuit voltage changes linearly with the field current at this data VLOC is 314. So, EL equal to VLOC in root 3 181 1.3 volt and X s equal to E upon I s c that is 181.3 divided by 400. So, X s is your 0 0.4532 ohm as a check unsaturated reactance is slightly higher than the saturated reactance as expected. So, calculate the field current required to find out I f in the first find out VLOC which means that calculate E and with the negligible resistance so e equal to v plus j i a x s. So, here v is 600 by root 3 that is 346.4 volt and i a is i a at theta. So, i a equal to s upon root 3 v l l that is 529.2 ampere and theta is cos inverse 0.9 that is minus 25.8 degree and i a is 476.3 minus j 230.7 ampere. Now, the angle theta is negative because the power factor is lagging. In. So, now substituting the value here e equal to v plus i z and that is e equal to 439.7 and e cut delta to e equal to 478 and delta is 23.5 degree as shown in the phasor. So, from table LOC which is equal to 
we all see root 3 into 478 that is 4, 828 and therefore, from the table I f equal to 60 ampere. So, coming to example 3, the open circuit test performed on a 3 phase 60 hertz synchronous generator. So, the rated open circuit voltage of 13.8 kilo volt is produced by the field current of 318 ampere acceleration of air gap line from complete setup of measurement on the machine shows that the field current was going to 13.8 kilo volt on air gap line is 263. So, calculate the saturated and saturated value of the LF in the between the phase and field winding. So, LF equal to root 3 F upon omega E LF, LF is 13.8 by root 3 that is 7.97 k kilo volt. Hence, the saturated reactance is LF equal to root 2 into 7.97 into 10 power 3 1 divided by 225 into 318 that is 94 milli Henry and such reactance is already LF equal to root 2 into 7.97 into 10 power 3 to 120 to 114 milli Henry. In this case, the so VC saturated current saturation reduces the mutual between the field current armature winding approximately by 18 percent. So, coming to example 4, a 1 MVA uh, 11 kV 3 phase start current synchronous machine has a following OCC. So, IF versus VOC is given here. The so circuit test yielded full load current at field current of 40 ampere and zero power factor test yielded full current load current at radio thermal voltage for a field current of 150 ampere. The armature resistance in equilibrium calculate the field current needed to for the machine to drop full load uh, 0.8 leading bar factor when operated as a motor connected to 100 kV supply. So, here by calculation we call it I here it equal to uh, power that is 1 megawatt 10 to power 6 by root 3, root 3 into 11 10 to power 3 that is 52.5 ampere and this is root 2 I A x that is 2060. So, I x 1 will be 2060 divided by root 3 into 52.5 that comes 22.65 ohm and I A rated I A accelerated is equal to 1185 volt. So, full load armature reaction will be I A R A that is 27.5 ampere and V T equal to 11000 by root 2 that is 6251 volt and cos phi will be 0.8 lead and phi equal to 36.9 degree. And from the phasor diagram we can say E R equal to 7100 or 12.3 kilo volt and I R I F R is 105 and I F equal to 120.5. So, coming to example 5, the open sun source kit test data of 3 phase 1 MVA 3.6 star connector synchronous generator is given I F and V O C I S C find the unsaturated synchronous reactance the, the adjusted synchronous reactance the source kit ratio the excitation voltage needed to get the rated voltage a full load 0.8 lagging power factor use the adjustable synchronous reactance voltage regulation for the so, it is the total short circuit and no, typically OCC are given here and from here you can find out unsaturated reactance from initial portion. So, from the rated voltage air gap line the short circuit current is 255 ampere. So, for a constant field current the excess unsaturated will be 3600 by root 3 divided by 250 it is 8.15 ohm and adjusted synchronous reactance is your uh, 3600 by root 3 divided by 270 that is 7.7 .7 ohm. And now for, for SCR, I A rate equal to 1 into 1 power 6 divided by root 3 into 3.6 into 10 power 3 that is 160.4 and source circuit ratio will be O F dash upon O F double dash from this cor characteristic to that 90 by 53 that is 1.698 and excitation voltage for 0.8 line that is I A rate is 160.4 into 0.8 minus 3.6. So, F will be your V plus I Z and from here E F is 2987 or line voltage is root 3 times this. So, that is 5173 volt and the now field current for 5173 line voltage is obtained from modify gap line. So, on linear basis we get I F equal to 90 upon 3600 into 5173 that is 129 ampere and from O C is your field current we get the V O C line 4175 and voltage regulation from 4175 minus 3600 divided by 3000 that is 15.97 percent like and these are the unsolved problem which you can solve in the similar manner and these are the references from which we develop this material and thank you very much.